So looking at him, you can see he looks fairly long in body and he looks fairly high in croup. So we don't want him to look like that. We want him to look like you've seen those dogs in the ring. So you can do what they're doing. You don't have to be, it's not, you don't have to be this magical groomer to do that. You can put that sort of work out. So we'll set down his croup and just coming through, stand up. His name's Zach and he's a party coloured standard and he's a big boy. He's, I'm using, now I refer to it in millage, this is a 10 mil or a, a size 2. I refer to millage rather than um, size of the blades because then I'm uh, thinking my staff will actually understand that the length they're doing rather than just doing it and just doing it for the sake of doing it. So yeah, so see the difference that's made already? Just bringing that down. Then we're going to come in and we're going to bring his rear in. So we'll come up, we'll come his turn a stifle. So you've got his knee. So we're go, going to go from the turn and come up and we want to come back to ourselves. We don't want to go in and we still want him to have a nice rear. So we're going to come in from here. Again, you can see the difference that's making already, just with him being shorter in back. Correctionally grooming all your dogs is the, is the linchpin in the success in your salon. Because if you can do what makes them look like, I don't know what you did, but it looks amazing. That's all you need to do. You don't need to be this huge control freak over your clients. You don't need to be anything. You just need to make their dogs look really pretty. So that out now. Now we'll come around to his front. So with his front, come on. So he could easily, we'll just come in and take a bit more out here. And it's important to be walking around. Oh, wait, hang on. It's important to be walking around your dog and not just looking at it. You know, you want to look at it from walking around. I'm using a 10 mil. And I find 10 mil the, the nicest, like it's an easy one to use, it's my most popular. So see that now, that top line? Excuse me, P, could I have some metal snap-on, the plastic snap-on? No, the plastic one. Yeah, yeah. It's funny how we all have our different things that we like, and I like those. They're my favourite. So, how long have you been grooming? Yeah, and it's it's awesome. The best part about it is that you can always keep learning. Like, it, you're here, you're around, you your peers and you just can always keep learning and you and then you can still have those epiphany moments which is is amazing that's better we'll go with this now I, okay, I need a 10 blade okay so one of the big things is to set your front legs in so the legs don't get set in at the elbow so our elbows here but we want to set the front leg in about here because you can see that's going to make him look a little bit more squarer. So just by having a bit more height, he's a big dog, he needs, you know, long legs. So we'll come in here, just there, and then I'll scissor his legs in from there. I've put in lay of shoulder, so. No, no, it's going to be it's going to be straight, but it's going to be set in under his shoulders. So this is his withers, and where his leg was here, it was at his front, was coming straight off. So we want it to move back and put it under his withers. His elbows need to be sitting under here. Otherwise, he looks like he's 
like doing that. We don't want that. Okay, come here. Put the lead on. Good boy. Mum's not there. Okay, put lead on. There you go. Good boy. And having dogs tethered on the table is really important and safe and never leaving dogs unattended. Okay, so he's very deep chested. So I'm going to come in and take off his here because you can see how deep he looks here. So coming through. Okay, so see the difference there now already? That makes heaps of difference. Okay. 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 Good boy. Okay. Good boy. Okay, so see now we've got a bit of angles happening. We've got the dog looking. Okay. Coming through. Okay, so nice angles. So see now it looks like he's got turn. Much nicer. So and we're gonna do the same on the front. I'm just gonna take it through the centre. And we want his undercarriage to meet his front. So when we're scissoring, this has all got to marry up. So now we've got that in. Then we can use a longer snap-on to take it off. I need... You'll have to excuse me, it's not my equipment, so I'm looking and I'm floundering. Okay, so I'm just going to use a longer blade to start with. Okay. Come on, good boy. Because I didn't prepare him. Okay. Okay, stand up. Good boy. Good boy, Zach. Okay. Good boy. Turn around. Good boy. Good boy. So just once I get it all roughed off, then I can recomb it. He's quite long. So we want to get it off, bulk it off, so we then we can scissor it in. And once I've got it where I like, I can always reverse clip and actually save me scissoring as well. Okay. So you can see I've left his top line. I haven't taken that. So I want to leave that so it's there for me to play with, to set it in and so I select correctly. I need to step back and look at him. I need to do all the right things. Okay, so we want to bring that leg in again. Okay, so see how I just corrected where he was standing? Because it's important for me, if he's not standing correctly, I can't do what I re I'm required to do. Good boy. Okay. And see how, okay. It's important not to take your hand off the dog. When you're trimming, some people will be grooming and they're just grooming and they're not actually got their hand. I need to have my hand on the dog so I can sense if he's going to move. It gives me um, a better chance of it not going pear shape. Okay, so now I've got a 13 mil on and I'm just going to run across that. 
bit, blend it a bit more. There's a few knots there. Yes. I'll um, show you. I'll just use like probably a 19. Just don't want to leave him. Oh. Stay there. Just can't get it out. There. What's this one? 32. The good bit about these snap on combs is that you have the ability to use a 32 mil. So um, with having the 32 mil, you can do your legs, you can do a lot more. So I'm going to put a 16 on and just, you can see it's quite, it drops quite away. So we'll just put a 16 on and run it across. Now I'll use, let's use, you know, use the 16 to finish that off. And then I can put the, the angle that I want to put in before I'll scissor that in. Now I'm just going to come in under here, clean that up a bit, take a bit of this. We want him to have a waist, so we don't want it to be um, really fat in the waist. We want him to come in and we can make him look really nice that way. So if I put on a 25, I can reverse this and get it really nice. Just by going up a blade size will help me. Well, it's just finishing it off a bit more, so it's just easier to scissor it in. You don't need to leave it that it's really hard. It doesn't have to be hard. It can be done in with the snap-on and then spritzed over. We can take here off we can come just straight back. Okay, so now I've got my parallel lines if I look from behind. And then I can work it. Could, wouldn't you just put a hand on him for me while I grab my scissors? With the magnetic combs, it's funny because everything you put down sticks to it. Because <laughs> we're doing Okay, so that's a big tail. Okay, so again, I want to just scissor in where I've blocked in. And that's a nice angle. But this dog would look so, will look so elegant done. Then we want to come around on that 45 there, coming across. So again, we're still blocking. We're not doing it to finish it. We're only doing it to block it. He is beautiful, isn't he? Okay, so we're coming across there on that angle and then we're coming across here. And even though I'm using curves, I can use curves, it doesn't, curves just give me, I use curves all the time and just use them as a straight. Okay. Okay, so coming over, coming to here. So with our tuck up, our tuck up is, starts at our last rib and the tuck up is what makes your dog look really nice. So by moving this part of the hair, having this a bit longer and having your tuck up in it's what gives you your elegance. It should be on a poodle, it should be a fairly extreme tuck up. So we want it to look a bit over exaggerated. So we're going to come up and we're going to pull him up here. and then come through and down. And it's when they're moving, it makes them look so pretty. 
Now I need a tin. You can use your clipper to help you with it. So you can come through with a, you know, a 10 or a 15 and just clean this up and take it forward so you're moving it forward. Each blade tells you how much you're going to leave. But there's a lot to learn before you can learn that. You've actually got to learn. There's a lot more to learn than your blade length. Your blade length is something, when I'm teaching, blade length is what I teach last. Because you've got to learn the whys of everything before you can learn, learn it. You've got to understand why you're doing it. Um, and the whys are the important part. Going to school is pretty important. It's so, it is so important because it's teaching you to groom without um, causing ailments and having distress. There's a lot that can go wrong, there's a lot that can go right and there's a lot that can go wrong. So I want to set in his leg, he needs to look like he has turn. And so by pulling him in here, I can shade all this in, like an angle like that. And by shading that in, it's going to make him look even more elegant. Good boy. And the dog doesn't have to have a lot of, he doesn't need length to look nice. If you went over, I'm judging poodles this afternoon, and you know, going over those level three dogs, the coats will be probably about that long. It's the dog that you're exaggerating. It's the coat, the body underneath, the science of the dog. That's what's going to make it look elegant. And you're, you're there to expose it and show it for what it is and make it look pretty. And pretty is it. What a good boy. Hey Zaki. Hey, what a good boy. He's a very pretty boy, isn't he? And he could look very slab-sided, so we need to make him look not, we need to make him look like he has um, roundness to his chest. So to do that, I'm just going to bring these in here and put a bit of shape because we want him to have spring of rib. Spring of rib is so important. A poodle isn't supposed to just be straight up and down. So with nice rib, so coming in from here, And I want to have this area quite short. Ah. Uh -uh. So on him, are you going to leave the, the, the you're not going to shave and, and do anything? To I'm make going to do it, but yeah, it'll be either scissored or it'll be a 32 mil, but it'll probably be scissored. Oh, I just need. Pete, Pete. Could you just have a look in the bag for me and find a spray bottle, please? I like to spritz when I'm working, so I like to spray the dog so that I'm tucking it in and it gives me a better scissor job, scissor work. That's it. Yes, yes please. So I use, whether I'm using product or just using um, water and a bit of conditioner, doesn't really matter to me. I just like to be using something. Okay. Has that got a lock on it? No. 
Oh, there it is. Yeah. Just turn it. So, yeah, so by spritzing, you can make your work look... I call it spritz and polish. So when you're finishing your work, I don't need, I use it all the way through when I'm working, but it just gives you such a better finish. You'll get... You can get it um, nice, quicker. You'll see while I'm doing it now, it'll just tuck in easier. And it's going to give a more satisfying haircut um, in the days that progress from when the client goes home. Because you can go back over, we usually go back over and spritz and polish after we've done the haircut. We'll go back over the whole haircut with the same blades that we used while we're spritzing and it'll just give us a much tighter finish. Okay, so you can see them coming together. I want to make sure, again, I'm talking about the spring of rib. And hold, the way you hold your scissors, with your scissors with your thumb pushing that way and fingers pushing that way, my scissor is holding my hand lovely and firmly. So I know it's an extension of my hand at all time. So that's when we can do it and just be going because we it is an extension of our hand. Come through. So bringing his leg down from here. Now and I find that's the hardest, the tuck up and the front legs are the hardest thing for you to like to teach people is setting in their tuck up and bringing their front legs up just that bit more rather than um, going to the elbows. Okay, I know you're looking for mum. You can see him sniffing. So once you've got it set in, then you can start scissoring it with the leg forward, but you do need to block it in first, otherwise you'll make it a mistake. And one of the things I do when I'm scissoring inside the front legs is that I, um, I swing my scissor that way. So I don't do that. Like I don't try to be straight with the leg. So if you try to be straight with the leg, you'll end up with that. So. Yeah, so if you swing your scissor out, you'll find it much easier. So my scissor is always going out that way and up that way. So just by doing that, then when I put it down, because the leg is really there, it's not here. So that by doing it that way, you're helping yourself. Um, and so then when I put it down, see how it's still straight? where you get the Christmas tree look. I caught they have all different names for it. Yeah. There's a lot of hair to come off you. Okay? A lot of hair. Boy. Good boy. So see, okay. Coming in here, setting your leg, coming in and setting your chest in separately is really important. So we still want to keep our spring, so we don't want to lose that. But we want to put just that separation. And because it's really easy to pinch the elbow, isn't it? Yeah. You'll get in and you'll get a hole in here. Maybe, you mean because I'm taking too much of this off? Yes. Okay. So yeah, so think of your leg starting there. And just there is really hard you tend to come in and take too much and then you've taken it and you can't fix it. So you want to 
So you can see we've got, just got to keep him straight. And see where he's standing is really important then. Yes. Um, and that's, um, you really have to be tough. And I start doing it by making it a square. So I don't try to set my leg in as such. I try to set it in as a square. And then by setting it in as a square, I can round, cut the corners off and round it up. So just pull that, again, think of the body. So that's the front. So coming in and setting in your front. And looking at more individually. So we want to make that leg look like it's a front 